Let us bow our heads. Oh Lord, give us a pure heart, a humble heart, a heart of love, a heart of faith, a heart committed to serving you. Help us to see each day as a new opportunity to share your love with others. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen.
Spirit as we hear God's word coming from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and the tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it. This is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them, they came to life and stood up on their feet a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word. God bless his word and the hearers of his word. Oh, okay. 
oh God, we thank you. We thank you, Father. But one day, one day, that day will come, oh God, and it's going to be sooner than later. And oh God, we give you the glory. We give you the praise, Father. In the name of Jesus, we give you the glory. Amen and amen.
Son of man, and say to it. This is what the sovereign Lord says Come, breathe from the four winds, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied, and he commanded me, and breathe, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. I want to talk from this thought today. When the Lord says, speak, speak. When the Lord says, speak, what should we do? Speak. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel's vision of the valley of dry bones came to him after God had directed him to prophesy the rebirth of Israel in chapter 36. God announced through the prophet that Israel would be restored to her land and be blessed under the leadership of David, his servant, who shall be king over them. This is clearly a reference to the future under the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, a descendant of David. However, this promise seemed impossible in light of Israel's present condition. She was dead as a nation deprived of her land, her king, her temple. And she had been divided and dispersed for so long that unification and restoration seemed so impossible. So God gave Ezekiel the vision of the dry bones as a sign. Are you still here? Amen. God transported Ezekiel, probably, not literally, and I don't know how God did it, but God does whatever God does, placed him in this valley full of dry bones and directed him to speak to the bones. Ezekiel was to tell the bones that God would make breath enter these bones and they would come to life just as God did when he created man and breathed life into Adam. The Bible said in Genesis 2 and 7, then the Lord formed the man and from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Ezekiel spoke to the bones, and they came together. Flesh developed, skin covered the flesh. 
breath entered the bodies and they stood up in a vast army. This vision symbolized the whole house of Israel that was in captivity. Like unburied skeletons, the people were in a state of living death. With no end to their judgment in sight, they thought their hope was gone and they were cut off forever. The surviving Israelites felt their normal hopes had been dashed and the nation had died in the flames of Babylon's attack with no hope of a resurrection. The reviving of the dry bones signified God's plan for Israel's future national restoration. The vision also, and most importantly, showed that Israel's new life depended on God's power and not the circumstances of people. Putting breath by God's spirit into the bones showed God would not only restore them physically, but he would also restore them spiritually. The Israelites residing in the Holy Land today are not the fulfillment of this prophecy. It will be fulfilled when God regathered believing Israelites to the land and Christ returns to us to us reestablish his kingdom. Listen, we are living in a dark time. The Bible says. In Timothy chapter 4, verse number 1, And now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the last times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and to the doctrine of devils. 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, says, This know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Are we living in some strange and difficult times now? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Some will be covetous, some will be boasters, proud blasphemers. Children will be disobedient to parents. So many are un thankful and unholy, without natural affections. Is it going on? Truth breakers and false accusers, people just tell a lie just to tell a lie. The bigger the lie, the bigger the crowd. The bigger the lie, the more money you can receive. In content fear, and they despise of those that are good. Y'all don't hear me this morning. Oh, glory to his name. The traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. We'll, we'll spend so much time doing other things. Three hours to watch a football game. I don't have a problem with it. You, you, you got four hours sometimes for a baseball game. Stay all night in the club. It won't give God an hour on Sunday morning. Love of the pleasure. More than love of God. They have a form of godliness. But they deny the power thereof. We are seeing this video live before our eyes today. Families are in crisis. Mothers are against mothers. Fathers are, and, and sons can't seem to get along. Even grandparents can't do anything with these out of control kids. Schools are in trouble. At least 550 children, educators, and school staff have been victim of school shooting since Columbine. During that period, 311,000 children have been exposed to gun violence. Yes. And less than 20 miles from where I'm standing this morning, yes. there were 26 people 
killed and Sandy Hook Elementary. Most of those were six and seven year old students. It's a dark thing. And there are, as dead, some politicians have lost their mind. Some have been arrested and spent time behind bars. We know one is waiting to be indicted. It's a dark time. There is racial unrest. Russia has invaded Ukraine. And somehow I hear the spirit speak to this dead world. It's like the vision of the valley of dry bones. He says, speak! Speak! Some churches are dry and dead. He says, speak! Speak to the bones. They are dry and they are scattered. They're dry and they're scattered. He says, speak! The deadness. Speak to the bones that have been dry a long time. I hear the prophet speaking. I hear preachers today speaking to the deadness of the world. We are similar to these bones in the valley. We've been there, we've been here a long time, and we're dry. I heard the prophet say, go on, speak to the bones. Tell the bones to come together. When the prophet made this plea, there was a great noise. The bones started rattling because they were scattered all over the place. When things come together that are apart like that, there's a great noise. Yeah. I remember the old Negro hymn. He said, and the foot bone got connected to the leg bone. The leg bone got connected to the knee bone. The knee bone got connected to the thigh bone, and the thigh bone got connected to the back bone, and the back bone got connected to the neck bone, and the neck bone got connected to the head bone. Oh, hear the word from the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Speak to them bones. Speak to the deadness of this world. Speak, yeah. prophet, speak. Them bones, them bones one day will walk around again. Them bones, them bones is gonna walk around. Them bones, them bones is gonna walk around. Hear the word from the Lord. Then the head bone was connected to the neck bone. The neck bone was connected to the backbone. The backbone was connected to the thigh bone, and the thigh bone was connected to the knee bone, and the knee bone was connected to the leg bone, and the leg bone was connected to the foot bone. Oh, hear the words of the Lord. The bones are now connected. I said the bones are now connected. But then, but then, but then, all of a sudden, flesh began to come on those bones. Then skin appeared on the bones, and the bodies became together. They're all intact. Everything looks good. Sometimes neighborhoods look good. Sometimes the political effort looks good. Sometimes the churches look good. Sometimes from the outside, families look good. But there's no breath in them. Everything 
looks good, but they're dead. Somebody say they're dead. There's no spirit in them. There's no life in them. So the prophet prophesied to the four winds. Hey, wind from the north, come on down. Wind from the south, wind from the east, wind from the west. And the four winds came and entered those dead bodies. And they came alive. What is he saying to us? Speak to the dead situations in your lives. God is speaking to us. And if God is telling you to speak, speak. Speak to your children. Speak. Speak to every child. As they go from place to place, speak. Before they leave to go to school in the morning, speak. Yeah. To them when, you're, when you're in your car, speak. Yeah. Have a conversation yeah. with your politicians. Yeah. Right now in our Matthew, we're sending letters to congressmen. Speak. Yeah. Speak. Speak yeah. to this dead world. Yeah. God is telling us to speak. We're seeing something, but we're not seeing anything. Speak to this crazy world by the Spirit and by the Word of God. And all of a sudden, not only will it come together and look good, but it will be full of life. Glory to God. Oh, I can see it now. I can see it. I can see little children filling the Sunday school rooms. I can see mothers and fathers coming and worshiping and blessing God together all over this world. I can see policemen and firemen caring for the community. I can see the politician got the right. I can see it, but somebody got to speak. Speak. And if you're speaking under the power of God, watch it happen. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. I thank God I thank God for his mighty power and for his grace. My brothers and sisters, just don't look at the situation. Don't just talk about the situation. Even though it looks impossible to correct, God is telling the Christian Humility to speak. Speak, my brothers and sisters. Speak, my teachers. Speak, my brothers. Speak the words of God. And when you're speaking the words of God, you're speaking life. Somebody stand on your feet and say, Praise God. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. Speak to the deadness, the things that have been destroyed in your life. Speak. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God.
you might be on the outside of his safe place. And as he, he is standing before you with his outstretched hand saying, come to me. Come to me. I can forgive you of your sins. Come to me. I can make you completely whole. Come to me. I can save your soul. If you're out of the safety zone, if you have not accepted our Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, he stands before you now saying, come, come to me. He, he has demonstrated how much he loved you because he died for your sins and for mine. Come to him and receive him right now in Jesus' name. Amen.